So I'd like you to settle down on your backs and actually have your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor. That's it, but because we're gonna do to start with just this sort of little dropping movement of the pelvis because I'm sure I'm not alone in this, but I've been experiencing sort of a bit of tightness around my lower back and the back of my pelvis. So what you're going to do, and we have done this before, is just this little movement where you pick your pelvis off the floor and then you let it drop back down onto the ground and you repeat that several times. So you're not lifting your pelvis very high. You might just lift it off the floor an inch or so and then let it drop back again and you repeat that. And the idea of doing that, of sort of repeatedly dropping your pelvis onto the floor, is that it releases the muscles around the pelvis and the lower back. Hi, Al. Sorry, I've muted you now, lovely. <laughs> Don't tell the girls though, but I can hear every word of them. <laughs> so on your backs, knees bent, picking up your pelvis, that's it Hillary, good, and letting your pelvis drop onto the floor. And I have found this has been one of the helpful things for just letting everything release a bit around my pelvis when I suppose it's the cold that, you know, we're not in the most relaxing situation at the moment. All of these things um, can conspire to just make us hold tension in our bodies. Okay, so maybe just once or twice more and then settle your pelvis down and bring your hands onto the front of your body. So bring your hands to rest somewhere on the front of your body. Can be the belly, can be the low ribs. Good. And just gather your attention into your breathing. And I'd like you to feel three cycles of breath move through you. So letting the breath come in. So feeling maybe the belly, the front of your body rising, um, widening, rounding. And as you exhale, letting the front of your body soften and fall back. And just really take this moment, these three breaths, this moment to sort of slow down and just be very present with your breathing, with your body. And yeah, without feeling there's any rush. Good. So maybe one last cycle of breath. Alice, we're just starting off lying down. Oh, I don't think I've spotlit myself, so I will do that. So lying on your backs with your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor. And then what I would like you to do now, you can come to a little bit of letting your head roll to the right and to the left. And also be a little bit of letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. You could obviously move the head and the knees together or you could do each one individually. So maybe feel, and again, <laughs> As I often say, try to, um, yeah, do what you feel drawn to doing. Good, letting the knees tilt to the right and to the left. That's nice. And again, just noticing how you feel around the back of the pelvis. Good, very nice. Okay, now we're gonna settle down and we're gonna move the upper body. So you could keep your knees bent or you could lengthen your legs out. Just do whichever feels most comfortable to you. And then you're going to take your arms up towards the ceiling and then make a sort of O shape with your arms. So you're interlinking your fingers. Yeah, you're making this O shape above your chest as if you're holding a big beach ball to your chest. And then you're gonna to start to rock side to side across your upper back, letting your head move with you, keeping your circle circular. Now, that's it, try not to 
if your knees are bent, so particularly what, yeah, if you've got your knees bent, don't let them move, Sarah. I can see quite a lot of, when you can do, let them move. But yeah, I'm trying to just move the upper body, yeah? And not the lower body. So the rocking is across the upper back. Good. Very nice. Um, that's it. Make sure your elbows stay bent and soft. So we, we keep this sort of circular circle. And whenever your arms get tired, bring them down by your sides because we're going to do another variation in a moment. Sorry, Kara, for being late. My Zoom is being really weird this morning. I don't know. Oh, don't worry, Panna. We're just starting lying on your backs when you do manage to. Lovely. Thank you. When you do manage to arrive. <laughs> so, mayhem. Someone else is arriving. Don is arriving as well. Yeah, I know, sort of all everything that's going on. It's a bit crazy. Hi, Donna. Okay, let your arms rest if you're still rocking your arms in a circle. And then we'll come to doing the one where you're taking your arms into a triangle. So bringing your arms up to make all these different shapes, a bit like we're in primary school. So arms back into a triangle, or arms into a triangle over your chest, elbows straight, hands stuck together. And now rocking side to side across your upper back. So the same thing, you can have your knees bent, or your legs long, but you're just moving your upper body. So your head can move with your arms, rocking side to side across your upper back. And again, <laughs> again, if like me, I think I just feel a bit of a creaky, creaky old wreck at the moment. Um, if like me, you, you're feeling stiff in the upper back as well as the, around the pelvis, then this can give ourselves a bit of a massage. If you've come to doing the triangle movement and it just feels a bit too much, so you can always come back to the circle because that's a bit softer. And also, again, when you've done enough, just rest your arms down by your sides. And let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. Yeah, that's nice, Donna. So the, the circle one, I just find if I'm feeling particularly tight in my upper back, it's a bit easier. Okay, so let the arms come to rest now. And if your legs are long, now bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. And come back to just tilting the knees to the right and to the left. That's nice. And just see how that feels. So maybe when we've moved the upper body a little bit, it, this lower body movement then maybe feels a bit easier. Bit more enjoyable. Good. You could then pause in the middle and then cross your arms over your chest like you were doing a moment ago, Rosie, and that's it. Come on to now letting the elbows and the knees and the head all roll towards the right and then all rock towards the left. Good. So now it's Perhaps so it's a sort of whole body movement. We're letting ourselves roll to the right and to the left across the back of our body. But again, you can keep it a small movement if you prefer, or you can let it be a little bit bigger. Whatever, again, feels right for you just now. And from here, Whenever you're ready, you're going to pause, settle down, uncross your arms. Good, let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then fold your knees into your chest. So you might like to just, yeah, you might like to do a little bit of rocking side to side here. You might like to just have a few breaths holding around the top of your knees or around the back of your thighs, that's nice. And the other thing you can do here is take your legs up to the ceiling and give them a bit of a shake out. Very nice. And yes, you can obviously add your arms in if you like as well. Good. And then from here, you're going to lengthen both legs onto the floor. The ground. Good. And lie long for a moment, just briefly on your back. And then what we're going to do from here is roll onto our front um, 
which as we all know is is with something we've been doing during <laughs> during this last period period of, of various lockdowns is good for our lungs this prone lying when we roll onto our fronts so disturbing yourself as little as possible rolling from your back onto your belly you can have your arms however you like i always like to have one hand on top of the other and my cheek or my forehead resting there so it's a bit like you're making a little pillow and give your pelvis a bit of a wiggle. So when we're lying like this, we just give the lungs in the back of the body, which is there's greater lung capacity in the back of the body, and it gives them a chance to sort of fully fill as we breathe in. So when you when you've given yourself a little bit of a wiggle with your pelvis, I'd like you to have three cycles of breath here on your belly, where again, like we did on our back, you're feeling your breath. And you're really gathering your attention into your breathing. Feeling the widening of the inhalation, the emptying of the exhalation. And from our bellies, we're going to fold into child pose. So it might be that you're quite keen to move off your belly. And it might be that you just, well, see how you feel when you end up in child. And you can be kneeling if you prefer. We're going to be doing child pose and then we're going to come and do a dog pose. So really sort of see how your energy levels are, because if it's nice being in child pose, stay there. And also when you feel ready, you know, if you're ready to move a bit more, come and do a dog pose and see how your dog pose feels. And then we're going to work with a bit of a sequence from hands and knees. And so Sarah, because we're gonna be doing quite a lot of hands and knees things, just go on to, and, and anyone really, if your wrists start to feel they need a break, just go onto your forearms and your elbows rather than your wrists. But yeah, first of all, just, just do a dog pose, see how dog pose feels. That will give you a good idea also how your wrists are feeling today. And yeah, just a nice lengthen out in dog. <sighs> And do you feel that you can bend your knees, one knee, both knees? Doesn't have to be the most amazing dog in the world, <laughs> just starting to wake our bodies up. Good. Ah, yes, and when you come down from your dog, there's no rush, but when you do, sit back in kneeling you can either and if you're not so happy sitting with your bottom on your heels you can be in up kneeling but i think most of you are okay and take the opportunity to give your hands a little bit of a shake out and also to bring the backs of your wrists together because we'll come back to this one a few times during the sequence all right so the first little bit of our sequence is we're going to go from dog pose through a forward bend down through a squat and then onto hands and knees so there's a, it's a fair bit of squatting today, but um, if like me, you're feeling a bit, you know, tight in the lower back, that will be good. So from hands and knees, tuck your toes under, big handprints on the floor, exhaling, rock your hips back over your heels, picking your knees up off the floor into dog pose. So second dog pose, we'll just have a few breaths here, bending one knee, bending both knees. Ah, big exhalations, letting the head go. From dog, we'll walk the hands in towards the feet, settling our weight into our feet, letting the head go. Again, if your lower back needs support, of course you can bend your knees and rest your elbows on your thighs. Really feel your weight rooting down through your heels. And then from your forward bend, when you're ready, you're going to start to bend your knees, 
Go straight forwards over your feet and come down into your squat. And it doesn't matter if your heels come up. That's fine. Because from <coughs> your squat, we're going to roll through the tops of the feet onto hands and knees. And at this point, I would probably untuck my toes because my knees are a bit happier like that. But that's up to you. And on hands and knees, you're going to come to some cat movements. Some cat movements and some tail wagging. So you can sort of move between the two, combine the two, do whatever feels you know, good for your body right now. So you can do a bit of, I tend to do a bit of cat and then do a bit of tail wagging. You should come back to a bit more cat. I'm just thinking about that um, feeling of mobility, freedom around the middle of ourselves, comfort by moving through cat tail wagging can we find a bit more comfort and ease and movement and freedom in the center of ourselves we've got lots of animals today because from here we're going to move on into fox pose which i'm always surprised by how um, <laughs> strenuous this is so you're going to lengthen one leg out behind you and the opposite arm comes forwards and then we're trying to steady ourselves here and also breathe. With your back, your raised leg toes, you can either point the toes or point the heel or do a bit of both. And it's just trying to feel really steady through that front hand. Sorry, you can always be on your front elbow if that's better. You're doing a good job there. Good. And then we swap sides. Come down, other leg back, the opposite arm forwards. Good. And this feeling of being long from our fingertips to our back heel. Long and trying to find this sense of steadiness. Breathing. Good, very nice. And yes, do come down and then sit back into kneeling, up or down kneeling. Give your hands a shake out. Bring the backs of your hands together. And then we'll go back through the sequence. We're going to go back into dog pose, forward bend, down through the squat. So come back onto hands and knees, tucking your toes under, rocking your hips back over your heels. And see how this third dog pose feels. So it might feel a bit more enjoyable to be in dog now. That might mean you want to stay there a little bit longer. And then from dog pose, whenever you like, you start walking your hands in towards your feet. So all of the weight is coming into your feet. And Sarah, if it's better for you to move into a forward bend in a different way, do so. So you might want to move through a squat into a forward bend and then back down into another squat. So forward bend. Remember, elbows can be on the thighs. Letting the head go, letting the arms go. And then bending your knees down, forwards over your feet into your squat. Again, if your lower back is feeling a bit tight, it might be quite nice to have a couple of extra breaths here. And then once more, rolling through the fronts of your feet to your best ability or whatever movement works for you, coming onto hands and knees. And back on hands and knees, you're going to come back to cat and tail wagging again. So in your own time. Rounding and dipping your spine. Letting your tail wag from side to side. Feeling the movement of your breath through your body. So I felt as I came back into cat pose the second time that I was a bit more aware of my breathing and just feeling the flow of the breath. Okay, this time from hands and knees, we're going to move into plank pose. So sorry if it's better to do an elbow plank, you can do that than anyone else. Um, come towards the fronts of your mats a bit, so you've got room to lengthen your legs backwards. And then shoulders over your wrists, we're going to lengthen one leg back, add the other leg in. And we're trying to feel ourselves in our long line of plank. And that's where we feel the abdominals working if we're keeping our pelvis in line. 
and not letting it sag down to the ground. Good. Stay there for as long as feels okay. And then come back out. We're going to do another plank. So sit back maybe for a moment over your heels, give your hands a shake out, bring the backs of your hands together. And then we'll do a second plank. So good New Year's plank pose to feel, yeah, to have abdominals. Okay, so towards the front of the mat, shoulders over the wrists. If you remember, I always seem to start taking my right leg back. So I'm going to take my left leg back first. And if you've always got a habit of going into plank pose with one leg first, try the other one this time. Good. And have, see how it feels to be in plank. Really stretch your heels away from you. So if you can get your legs, particularly the feet, the heels to work, the calves to work in plank. It shares the work with the arms. And then once more, <laughs> come down, give your hands a shake out. Bring the backs of your wrists together. So one last time, we're going to go through our dog pose, forward bend, squat sequence. And so sorry for you, it might be dog pose, squat, forward bend, squat. Um, so back onto hands and knees one last time tucking the toes under rocking the hips back and up into dog in this dog see how it is to settle <sighs> focus on the breathing maybe in this dog perhaps we've released a bit of the tension in the back of the legs can we feel our breath more clearly in dog I always feel like I've probably said this a lot, like I want to breathe through my mouth and dog, so that's absolutely fine if the same applies to you. And then from dog, walking the hands in towards the feet, coming into our forward bend, or sorry through your squat into your forward bend, seeing how it feels to be in a forward bend this time. You've always got the option of the elbows on the thighs, but you might find it's a bit easier now to release your body forwards, your arms, your head. Good. And then that's it, bending your knees forwards over your feet, folding down into your squat. Fine if the heels come up because we're gonna roll forwards or make our way forwards to our best ability onto hands and knees. Now this time on hands and knees, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're going to step one foot forwards between our hands into lunge and um and so b b and i are going to have a little chat about quads after class if anyone else is interested and obviously lunge as we well know is one of the poses the positions where we feel the quads stretching out in the back leg thigh so obviously in lunge you can have your back toes tucked under or your back toes flat giving the pelvis down to the ground, looking for, well, we don't have to look too hard, feeling that stretch through the front of the back leg, groin and thigh. And we're going to ease back out of this lunge. And I tend to have my foot flat for this. So it's the one where we start to then bend the back knee and keep our chest on our front leg thigh and look back behind. Very nice. And then on hands and knees, swap. So you bring your other foot forwards in lunge. And again, it's always helpful in lunge to just really pay attention to how we're organized. So our front knee over our front heel. We've walked the back leg away. So we're feeling that lengthening through the front of the pelvis, the front of the groin, the front of the back leg thigh. <sighs> And it might be, yes, for some of you, I quite know that you quite like to rock in and out of this easing back. So that's always a really good option. If you untuck your back toes, do a little bit of sort of easing forwards and back. And again, me, I was just thinking if there's one quad that's sort of more problematic, it might be that the easing, when that's the back leg, it might be that the easing forwards and back is helpful. 
sort of backing away from the stretch and then coming into it. Okay. Yes, and then do finish by easing back out of the lunge. Good. And then what we're going to do is come onto a longer hands and knees position so that we can start to think about moving. We're going to be doing our tail wagging, wagging our tail back towards child pose and forwards towards face up dog. So you need to have this longer hands and knees position so that when you come into face up dog, it feels more comfortable for the lower back. Just yeah, wagging your tail, rocking your pelvis side to side, going back into child, coming forwards into face up dog. And when you arrive in face up dog, there's that nice feeling of opening through the front of the chest. And whenever you want to have a few breaths in child pose, just stay back in child. And then we will do our other way of coming into face up dog with cat. So just let yourself maybe have a couple of quiet breaths. Good. That's nice, very nice face up dogs, everyone, beautiful. So yes, a couple of breaths if you like, and very nice, looks wonderful. Okay, Liz, have we lost Hannah and she wants to come back in again. Okay, just yeah, take the weight off your arms for a moment. Me, little child. So sorry, Kara, just keeps dropping in and out. It's well, so don't worry, about it. it's all right. At least I can see that you're in the waiting room. <laughs> I was on a plank for a very long time and I thought you were well really making well done. suffer. Well done, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I didn't realise it had dropped out. So I was Okay, yes, you, you just thought, oh my God, what's going on? Oh God, this is <laughs> okay, so let's, um, let's just do a little bit of going into face up dog through cats. So again, you're on your, in your long hands and knees. You've got your toes tucked under. So we'll first of all round our back and then stay rounded to rock our hips back over our heels. Let a breath come in here and then travel forwards with the back still rounded, looking at the pelvis. And then releasing your pelvis, untucking your toes into face up dog. And then I really like with this one that we would then reverse that movement. So we come back, tucking the toes under, rounding the back, looking back. And then we travel forwards again with that rounded back, looking at our pelvis, and then opening out into face up dog. We'll do that three times. So again, reversing the movement, tucking the toes under, rounding the back, rocking back. And then this is just this opportunity as we travel forwards to really lengthen out the lower back. We end up in our face up dog. And so again, after this, <laughs> three face up dogs like this have we're going to have three cycles of breath in child pose or kneeling and then we're going to come up into standing so I just would like you to settle once more with your breathing either in child or kneeling so once you've done yes your three face up dogs gathering your attention into your breathing and is taking the time to feel three cycles of breath moving through you. So the feeling of the inhalation expanding within you, and then the exhalation emptying you, softening you. And then just allowing that to repeat and being aware of it two more times. Okay. 
Okay, so make this your last cycle of breath. And then when you're ready, you're just going to make your way up into standing. And I thought we were doing standing. I, I say some things that are uplifting, mood, um, <laughs> mood um, boosting. So I think we perhaps will need that at the moment. And we'll see if my notion of, of this is the same as anyone else's. So the first thing we're going to do is, yes, exactly, Sheila, it's not necessarily um, mood boosting, but I think it probably always cheers me up. It's just a loose, easy swinging twist. And maybe, <laughs> and maybe this is mood boosting because, yeah, it's, it's quite easy and quite pleasant. And I think when we do these movements where the whole body is part of the movement, there's something quite satisfying and also soothing about them. And so one of the things as we're doing these things in standing, I wanted us to think about is there's things that boost our mood by calming us and there's things that boost our mood by energizing us. And some things do both. Okay, just a couple more times. Okay. And then, so the first thing I thought we would do is a bit of moving, um, continuing really from face up dog with these movements that open us through the front of the body. So we're going to do some standing back arches. I would suggest you have your feet quite a sort of generous distance apart. I'm going to go side on. And again, you've got these options. You've got a few options here that if your lower back, you know, benefits from it, your knees could be bent. That's one option. Then we'll come to this, some of the other options. So the very first thing we're going to do is just this, trying to make this connection that as we look up, our pelvis moves forward. So if you've got your hand on your belly, it, again, we're trying to get the, the standing back arch to be a whole body movement. So as we look up, our pelvis moves forwards and our weight shifts towards the front of our feet. And again, if your lower back's not so happy, you bend your knees. And then, yes, Hillary, the, exactly. The other little ad adaptation you could do here is if you don't like taking your head back or feel your neck feels vulnerable, support your head with one hand. Okay, so that's a possibility. Another possibility is taking one arm up. And for me, that often helps because I think when we've got an arm up, there's a bit more weight there, so we have to let the pelvis come forwards. Yes, and then you can try both arms, and then you can come down into a forward bend and a squat, and then we'll do a little bit more. So just really pay attention to your own body in these. Come down into a squat. Yeah, if your feet are very wide, you might feel that you need to bring them in a little bit for your squat, or you might, you might enjoy having your feet wide apart squat. But yes, so... As much as these standing back arches can be quite challenging, I do always find them a bit uplifting because we're opening through the front of ourselves. So when you come back up, you can try with one arm or you can try with both arms. You could be supporting your head, sometimes going into it quite quickly. So it's almost all one movement. We swing our arms up and back and we let our pelvis move forwards. And Yes. Good. And remember, and I, I think I wonder whether for you, Rosie, that feeling of bending these and letting the tailbone drop, because I think sometimes your pelvis, yeah, isn't so happy. I don't know, isn't so happy with these. So, yeah, remember for not just Rosie, for anyone, there is that option if we're feeling that the lower back starts to tighten or shorten, that we can bend the knees. And, but remember, if these don't make you feel joyful, that's fine. <laughs> We've got other things to move on to. So it might be good to do, do one last standing back arch if you like, and then come down again through a forward bend and into another squat. And obviously from your forward bend and your squat coming back up, into standing when you're ready. And um, 
And we're going to do something that is not really something that I've taught in a long, long time. It's um, <laughs> it's very appropriate at the moment. It's called the breath of joy. And yeah, it might help. And so maybe it's something we're going to do over the next few weeks. So in this, we're, we've, we're, so first of all, you're, I think you're standing with your feet slightly wider apart and you're bending your knees a little bit. So it's a bit more like you're in a sort of Tai Chi stance. Yeah, so really sort of rooted from the waist down. And then we make three movements with our arms on a single in breath. So it's almost like you divide your inhalation into three. But that I think is you know the trickier bits about this. So if you run out of breath, don't worry, just um, have another breath. So we're gonna repeat this a few times. So we start breathing in and we take our arms up in front of us, shoulder height, good. And then we carry on breathing in and take our arms wide like wings. And then we finish off that in breath, taking the arms up. And as we exhale with a big, ah, we flop forwards. Good, very nice. And then we'll repeat that again. So come back up. So breathing in, breathing in, breathing in, and then ah, with an exhalation. Again, so breathing in, breathing in, breathing in. <sighs> Bend your knees as you go forwards. I think we'll do it three more times. So breathing in, arms to out to front of you at shoulder height, breathing in, arms like wings, breathing in, arms up, and then. <sighs> Breathing in, in, in. <sighs> and then one last time. <sighs> Good, so I'm sort of thinking that might be something you could play around with on your own if you feel you need to be uplifted. And I think we will come back to it and, um, you know, see how it feels as we become more familiar with it. So one more thing in standing, we're going to do a balance. So we're going to do a balance where we can be sort of quiet and calm, but there's also an option to be more, um, what would I say? What did I write down? Energizing. <laughs> so to start with, feet um, maybe slightly closer together. Closing your eyes and just a little bit of swaying from side to side, deciding which foot you'd like to stand on. So this in itself, this swaying side to side can be really calming and, what do we say, centering, <laughs> brings us down into our footprints. So from rocking side to side, you hopefully you choose one foot you're going to stand on first. And I'd like you to take that arm up. So your standing foot arm comes up. And we're going to be shifting our weight into that standing foot. And we're going to come into this one where we catch the top of the foot. So this sort of stalk dance, suppose. And then your raised arm hand can come onto your chest. So this is the sort of calming place. And if you're feeling calming is what you need, you might like to stay here. If you want to make it a bit more energizing, you can then start to reach your arm forwards and your foot back away from your bottom. So we've got this sort of forwards and backwards dynamic now going on. And a bit of a stretch again through the quads, dare I say it. And a few breaths, good. Very nice. Lovely. <laughs> Coming down. Good. So as we, as we do that on the other side, now you know what we're doing and where we're going, you might need to notice those different sort of qualities of the balance, the sort of calming, possibly moving on to the more energizing. So come back to your feet being a little distance apart, taking the other arm up towards the ceiling, starting to shift your weight into that leg. Good. And then peeling the other foot off the floor. And then your hand comes down to your breastbone and just, yeah, take a couple of breaths here and see if we can have this sense of this being a sort of calming place to be. 
And then if you want to make it a little bit more energizing, you start to reach the foot back, the arm forwards. So we've got this sort of dynamic feeling now of reaching forwards and back away from our center. But still trying to keep steady and planted on our standing foot. Good, well done. Come down and yeah, I think a bit of a shake out. So let's just give a shake out of legs. Shake out of legs and then maybe a shake out of arms and then a bit of a wiggle of the pelvis. And maybe everything can have a bit of a shake out. And we're going to come down to the ground through one more forward bend and one more squat. If you felt that you wanted to stay in this squat and you want to put something under your heels, then this might be the opportunity to do it. You don't have to, but that's that's a yeah, that's a possibility. Oh, and I was gonna say come towards the front of your mat to do this because we're gonna need the the sweep of the, the length of the mat behind us for what we do next. So at the front of your mat, you can let yourself roll down <sighs> into a forward bend. And then from your forward bend, start to bend your knees forwards over your feet, coming down into your squat. And in, yes, in this squat, if you want to have something under your heels, you can do. Also in this squat, if you want to take your knees wider apart so that your body folds down in between your knees, that can be helpful. <sighs> And then from this squat, we're going to be sitting ourselves down onto our bottom. So you probably at this point where if you've got some book there, you might just sit onto your book, mightn't you? So use your fingers to help you sit down safely and lean back onto your arms and lengthen out your legs. And give them a bit of a roll. Good. And then come into this position towards the front of your mat where you've got your knees bent, your feet standing on the floor, but not too close into your bottom. Because we're going to start to think about these movements where we're rounding our back and then we're going to be rolling backwards. You'll know where this leads to. <laughs> so you're going to start by looking down, sliding your hands from your feet to your knees and just leaning back a bit. And then coming forwards and all the time you're looking down and you're trying to sense the back of your body and feel that the back of your body is rounding out rather than being sort of flat and straight good and just do this a few more times so we're just trying to um <laughs> embed within ourselves this sense of being rounded We'll go a little bit further now. Now I'm quite keen um, now when I slide my hands back to sort of just have my fingers around the back of my thighs as I rock back and then look forwards to come up. So as you're going down, look down at your belly. As you're coming back up, look forwards. You might need a bit of momentum. So as you go back, you're trying not to go all the way down onto your back. You're trying to balance on the middle of your back. And, you know, if you're feeling a bit tight in the lower back, it's not always that easy. So let's do this a couple more times, rolling back. The next time we come back, let's just maybe just see how is it to try to balance here with the knees bent. And come up. Okay, just for a moment, lean back onto your arms and let your legs lengthen out. So we'll go back and we'll see how it feels to lengthen our legs out at that point in our lovely little abdominal balance. 
and we'll try that three times and see how we get on. So rolling back, rolling back, looking at your belly, letting your feet pick up off the ground. And then this time, how does it feel if you let your legs leg free? Now I'm slightly feeling here, so I've got to bend my knees to come back up again. So I slightly felt that time that I let myself go a bit too low and then it was quite hard to find the balance. So if that was the case for you, we roll back, Roll back, maybe you need to pick the feet up sooner, not letting yourself go too low. Not an easy one to stay in. Coming up, and then we'll, we'll try one more time going back. And then after this one, you can lie down and we'll do a few things on our backs. So looking down, looking down. Fingers behind the back of the knees, let the feet pick up. And then let, you, let yourselves collapse down onto your backs. And yeah, just see how it feels. So once you arrive on your back, you can do whatever you like for a moment, which might just be nothing. Yes, what can I see people doing? Yeah, folding knees into the chest is nice. Standing feet on the floor, tilting the knees from side to side. Rolling the head on the floor might be quite nice. Maybe not these things all together. So yeah, just for another minute or so, just seeing how your body feels and doing anything that you feel your body would like. And then you're going to be quietening down and bringing your hands onto the front of your body. So come back to where you were right at the beginning of class with the hands resting on the front of the body and feeling the movement of the breath in the body. So now the belly can be soft and relaxed, not having to work here. So we can feel the front of ourselves responding to our breathing. Please come to say hello. And then we'll do a few movements here. So you could keep your hands on the front of your body if you like for the moment, or let your arms come to rest on the floor. And if your legs are long, you're going to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. And just take a moment to feel the contact of your footprints on the ground, the contact of the back of your pelvis on the ground. And then start to let your knees tilt to the right and to the left. That's it. So again, coming back to one of these movements we did at the beginning of class and keep it easy, keep it comfortable. I want you to particularly notice now how the weight shifts side to side across the back of your pelvis. To the left and to the right. And then I'd like you to settle in the center and start to tilt your pelvis up and down. So tip your pelvis towards your head so your lower back flattens out a bit more and tip your pelvis away from your head so your lower back arches off the floor a little. That's it. So you're now tilting the weight to, to the top of the pelvis and the bottom of the pelvis. And so this is, a, again, when we're thinking about um, releasing the lower back, this is another really good movement. It also takes us on into bridge pose. So when you tip your pelvis and flat towards your head and flatten out your lower back, that's the very beginning of bridge pose. And you can take it on into bridge pose two or three times and just see how bridge pose feels.
very nice pelvis tilting bee that looks lovely so as you so often what I find is when I go into bridge pose, my spine comes up, you know, not vertebrae by vertebrae, but then there's a bit more control when I'm placing my spine and my pelvis back down. So that's really the time to see if you can place your pelvis, your spine and then your pelvis down slowly. So the spine comes back onto the floor, vertebrae by vertebrae. And so again, if we're trying to address any of these sort of tightnesses or also instability around the lower back, then this is really helpful. So next time you come out of bridge pose, Keep your pelvis down on the ground because we're going to carry on with bridge, but we're going to alternate with a sort of little sit up type movement. You'll be thrilled to hear. So when your pelvis is down on the ground, bring your hands around the back of your head and interlink your fingers. So and then you're going to, as you exhale, lift your head, gather your elbows in and also tilt your pelvis towards your head. So the middle of your back presses on the floor. And then you can come back down, release your arms, come back into bridge pose, see how it feels. And then slowly roll back down from bridge, placing your spine onto the floor, vertebrae by vertebrae. Otto has been extremely unhelpful now. Can you get out of the way, please? And then again, we'll do the little sit up. And you've got, uh, there's a further option I'll add in here. So again, interlink your fingers around the back of your head. As you exhale, gather your elbows in, lift your head. You could also pick your feet up off the floor and bring your knees towards your elbows and stretch into your heels and spread your toes. So that's a further option if you like. And then release the head back onto the floor, come back into bridge pose. So we're gonna do this twice more, moving between bridge pose and one of these little, I suppose, have your feet on the floor or pick the feet off the floor so come that's it come back down come into bridge pose again and then twice more alternate between bridge pose and one of these little either the sort of mini sit up or the one where you almost come into a really little ball don't you so you sort of gather in that's it elbows towards knees middle of the back pressing on the floor that's nice. And then we contrast that with coming into bridge pose and the feeling of the front of the body opening out. That's nice. Good. Sending the knees forwards or over our footprints. So you could, yes, I think you're going to finish with a bridge pose. You could do one more pair of movements if you like, or if you've had enough, just um, stop where you are. That's it. So yes, when you've done your last bridge pose, if you're doing some more, that's fine. When you've done your last bridge pose, fold your knees into your chest. Lovely bridge poses. And then I thought one, <laughs> one last thing to cheer us up, which is off the mat, which is happy baby pose, of course. What could be more cheering so we've got our knees folded into our chest we can take them a bit wider apart we can orientate the soles of our feet towards the ceiling our knees stay bent we hold around the back of the knees or we hold the ankles or the big toes or outer edge of the feet we can rock from side to side and we can rock ourselves by reaching up into one foot and then the other. So we've got, yeah, once you're in happy baby, you know, you can just have a bit of a, a play around there with whatever, whatever feels enjoyable. As we're doing this too, yeah, just to sort of boost, boost ourselves a little bit. That's nice, good. And the, the final thing would be after you've had enough happy baby would be to take the legs up to the ceiling, give them a bit of a shake out.
lovely. And then we're going to finish with some, I was going to say lying down and breathing. You could sit, but I think lying is good. We're going to do some of the sounds we were doing towards the end of last term, the sort of sighing, hissing, etc. So just make sure you're going to be warm enough. Blankets, socks, and enjoy this opportunity to have a little bit of a lie down. Obviously the most difficult thing to do when we're at home. And so this time of year, we always think all these sort of New Year's resolutions, we should be up doing lots of things. And actually, we're still very much in the middle of the winter. So it's good to take these opportunities to be warm, to rest, to look after ourselves and not to push ourselves. So you can have your hands resting on the front of your body or your arms by your side, whichever you prefer. And it might be that you like, you'd like to let your head roll a little bit to the right and to the left. Just to find a comfortable resting place for your head. To make sure the back of your neck is nice and long and relaxed. And so from rolling your head, find a comfortable place to settle the centre of the back of your head down on the ground. If your neck still feels that you could do with a bit of lengthening out, you can pick up your head in your hands and gently lengthen out the back of your neck and then rest your head back on the ground. And we're going to then start by coming to the sighing breath and we're going to have four big sighing breaths. So you let the breath come in through your nostrils. And then oh, big sighing exhalation and we'll repeat that three more times. Oh. And as you sigh, particularly try and let your shoulders rest down onto the ground. <sighs> One last time. <sighs> And then you settle with your natural breath. So for a few cycles of breath, not doing anything to your breath. But as we have been doing during the class, just feeling the movement of our breath in our body. And then we're going to come to our hissing breath. And I think we'll do maybe five cycles of the hissing breath. So we, it's a longer breath. We let the breath come in and we exhale, hissing through our mouth. And this is very good for releasing tension on all levels. So let a breath come in. And again, breathing in. Letting the breath come in again for your own time. Yeah. 
I think we've got two more hissing breaths in your own time, breathing in and hissing on the exhalation. And in this returning to feeling the flow of your natural breath in your body. Just letting yourself, your awareness settle with the in and the out breath moving through you constant rhythm of the breath. And then I thought we'd finish with a breathing sound, which is a little bit, what did I say, sort of energizing. So we've done the sort of relaxing ones, a bit like with the balance, we're coming to a slightly more energizing breath. So if your hands are not on your belly, it's probably quite good to have your hands on your belly now. And this is a little bit like in the breath of joy, we make a ha, ha, ha sound as we exhale. And you feel your belly move back. So it's also a bit like Kapalabhati breath. And we ha, 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 ha. And this can wake us up a little bit as well. So you do that maybe a few more times. Ha, 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 ha. You can do a long one at the end. And then just one last time, letting yourself settle quietly with the natural flow of your breath. And in a moment, I'm going to ring the singing bowl three times. And once we reach the silence at the end of the third sound, then if you want to start to move, any little movements your body would enjoy. So thank you very much, everyone. It's a rush to enjoy your period of quiet and rest. I'm just going to stop. Cool.